further ado, I'd like to introduce J.D. Slatcher. Thank you for coming. Very cool to be back here. Wow. Um, before I begin, I would like to take a second to thank uh, several individuals that allowed me to be here today. Of course, our Deputy Athletics Director and Senior Woman Administrator, Kelly Barsky, our Athletic Director, John McCutcheon, and our Assistant Athletic Director for Student Services, David Campbell. Thank you all so much for inviting me back here today. I would also like to take a second to thank and congratulate three of my former college teammates that are graduating today, Jerice Blackman, Maxwell Kupchak, and Ami Lakoju. Love you, brothers, and congratulations. But more than anything else, and before I begin, I would like to say congratulations and thank you to the UCSB class of 2019. Thank you for letting me share this incredible day with all of you. It is truly, to be an, honor, it is truly an honor to be back here this afternoon after graduating from this prestigious university exactly one year ago today. Completing all of your time here as student athletes is an incredible achievement, and you should all be very confident as you head off into the world to tackle whatever is next. Knowing that the lessons you have learned here during your years are things that you will be able to apply to any facet of life and any challenge moving forward as you chase after your dreams. But today I'm not talking about just any dreams. I'm going to be talking about your wildest childhood dreams. I want you to think about the dreams that you had for yourselves as little kids. I want you to think about the dreams that kept you awake at night, the dreams that got each and every one of you here today. The author of the last lecture, Randy Pausch, was someone who inspired. And in his final days as a motivator, he spoke quite a bit about how exactly to achieve your childhood dreams. What I would like to tell all of you is to know that as you work towards those childhood dreams, because of the lessons you learned here, you will be able to achieve them. The UCSB Athletics mission statement says that we foster a sense of community. Having a strong community is exactly where chasing after your wildest childhood dreams must begin. This sense of community is instrumental in aiding you in your journey of achieving those dreams because no man or woman, no matter how strong or how smart, is able to achieve anything entirely on their own. Each of us needs help and each of us needs a strong community, which is something that each of you can now say that you have. Just take a look around this room. For me, today I'm going to be talking about the five people that helped me achieve my wildest childhood dreams. The first person that helped me achieve my ch wildest childhood dreams was a little boy with sickle cell disease. I met him when he was only six years old and I was 17 playing high school basketball and pretty much the only person I cared about at the time was myself. I was a wide-eyed, snot-nosed kid doing only the things that I cared about. When after one of my high school basketball games, this girl whom I never previously met before came up to me and said that my little brother wants to meet you and play basketball with you. So I sort of looked at her and said, sure, you know, I'm, I'll get around to it when I can. I'm pretty busy. And that's when she said, no, it has to happen next week. And so I said, you know, why is that? And she said, because my little brother is six years old. He has sickle cell disease. And the last thing that he wants to do before he goes into a full year of isolation for a bone marrow transplant is meet you and play basketball with you. That little boy and I became best friends. So during his year of isolation at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, I would go and spend as much time with him as I could, reading to him, hanging out with him, talking to him about how I was coming to UCSB to play basketball. And I would go and see him so often that we built an incredible bond and an incredible relationship to the point where I was very open with him about what I was going through. And one of those days, I was not not in my best spirits. So I went to go and see him, and he could tell right away that something was wrong that day in the hospital. And he asked me, you know, what's going on? So I started to explain to him my pain and my struggles and the things going on in my life. And only after he let me finish getting it all out, 
at six years old, he looked at me and said, you know, I would do anything for your worst day. To him, those would have been the best days of his life. He just wanted the chance to fall, but had the chance to get back up. If you want to achieve your wildest childhood dreams, you have to be thankful even for your worst days. Because whether you realize it or not, someone would do anything to be in your shoes. Someone goes to bed every night and dreams about dealing with your problems. You are lucky to be able to have some of your worst days. Embrace them. The next person to help me achieve my wildest childhood dreams was a living scholar and donor for the UCSB athletic department. He was someone that could glow up an entire room with his smile and he could change your life with a story. And he was a very good friend of mine during my time here, but he was an incredible role model. He had just moved into a new house in Santa Barbara and invited a teammate of mine to come over for dinner. And so we happily agreed and we're driving up the windy Montecito Mountains to go and have dinner at his new house. When we sat down, the first thing he started asking us was, how are we looking for this season, boys? So we started to tell him that we were looking good and we were going to have a good year and he had nothing to worry about. And that's when he then turned to me and said, so what's your role gonna, on the team going to look like? To this point in my career, I'd been here for two years and I had yet to put on a UCSB uniform. I hadn't played a single minute. So when he asked me that, I was reluctant to make such promises that things would be any different. And that's when he started to tell me a story. He looked at me and he said, you know, when I was getting ready to move, I wanted to buy a house that my wife and I could live in for the rest of our lives. And I wanted to make sure that the most important thing about the house when we moved was to make sure that it had an incredible view of all of Santa Barbara. So we looked and we looked and we were trying to find the house that had the incredible view, but unfortunately we couldn't find anything that we had been hoping for. So eventually we found this house and it was a beautiful home, but it unfortunately had a hill that was blocking our view of the Santa Barbara Valley. So we said, you know what, we're going to take this house anyway and move in. And we did. And after living there for a few weeks, he decided, you know what, I'm going to do something about that hill. So he went down to the store, bought 10 cans of orange spray paint, hired two of his construction workers and said, meet me at the bottom of the hill tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. because I have a job for you guys. And the next day, him and two other construction workers met at the bottom of the hill, and he took the cans of orange spray paint and spread about a 10 foot, sprayed about a 10 foot by 10 block of dirt and looked at the guys and said, today we're going to get rid of this. 30 minutes later, that portion of the dirt was gone, and the guys looked at him and said, what do you want us to do next? And he said, that's it. You guys go ahead and go home. But meet me back here tomorrow morning at the exact same time, and I will have more work for you guys. Then he said the next day they did the exact same thing, and then the day after that, and then the day after that, and then a year later that hill was gone. And then he pointed out of his window while still looking at me and said, do you see a hill over there? And I looked out to a gorgeous view of all of Santa Barbara Valley. If you want to achieve your wildest childhood dreams, you may have to do it one block of orange spray paint at a time. The next person that helped me achieve my wildest childhood dreams was probably the worst professor I ever had as a student here. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't like him. He was terrible. <laughs> he was the kind of teacher that you would turn in a five-page essay to, only to have him read the first sentence, circle it in red ink, and give it back to you and tell you how horrible it was. But over the years, I started to build an incredible relationship with him because I realized it was just because he cared so much about us as writers and students. And I started to learn so much about him, from him, about writing, but even more about hard work through these lessons. So over time, we, we ended up becoming incredible friends to the point where I wouldn't submit any piece of writing without his prior counsel. So when I was talking to UCSB about coming to speak today, I was obviously thrilled to be coming back. And so I ran home, was jotting down themes and ideas about all the things I wanted to talk about and, and all the things I wanted to tell all of you today. And I felt like I'd created probably the greatest commencement speech in human history. <laughs> Fully confident it would just blow your minds. And I got in touch with my professor, and I told him, hey, would you give this a read and let me know what you think? 
And so he said, sure, of course. And a couple of days later, he got in touch with me that he wanted to meet to go over it. So I met with him. And after about two minutes of sitting down with him, he looked at me and said, you know, JD, this is terrible. <laughs> and he handed me back my entire speech. And not just the first sentence, but the entire thing was circled and crossed out in red ink. <laughs> yeah. If you want to achieve your wildest childhood dreams, Get used to dealing with red ink covering your entire first draft. The fourth person who helped me achieve my wildest childhood dreams is someone I've never even met. A friend of mine was recently traveling, and he was in Port Antonio, Jamaica, when he had made the mistake of only bringing with him $100 and a credit card, meaning that he couldn't access an ATM in order to get more money on his trip. So the only thing he had for food his entire time was $100 and he was staying in a hostel where normally college kids and travelers stay. And on his final night before he was headed home, the only thing he could afford for dinner was a spoon with peanut butter on it. And so he was sitting there doing his best to try and sate his hunger with this peanut butter when a woman came up to him and asked him, are you hungry? And this, he looked at the stranger and said, no, you know, I'm OK. But again, she persisted, are you hungry? Are you hungry? So after a couple more minutes, she invited him and said, you know, would you please come and have dinner with my family and I? And he finally accepted. So she took him over to the dinner table where she had just prepared dinner for her and her family when he realized that this woman was a single parent and had five children under the age of eight years old staying in this hostel. So then confused why they would be staying somewhere where normally, as I said, college kids and travelers would stay, he looked at her and asked, why are you guys here? And that's when she looked at him and said, I recently just lost my home in a fire, and we had nowhere else to go. And then, before feeding her own kids, and with quite probably what was the last meal she could afford, she served my friend before she, she fed any of her own children. And my friend, just so shocked by this act of kindness, looked at her and asked, why are you doing this when you have nothing? And that's when she looked at him and said, because we have to share. If you want to achieve your wildest childhood dreams, make sure you don't forget to stop along the way to share with the people that can only afford a spoon with peanut butter on it for dinner. As athletes, you know all about hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. Hard work is all of that time in the gym, on the field, or in the pool that each and every one of you have poured into your craft to get here. Hard work is giving that extra rep or doing that extra workout in order to make sure that you are more than ready. Dedication is continuing to work hard even when the odds are stacked against you. Dedication is being able to look defeat in the eye and say, not yet. Dedication is having tunnel vision on your goal. Sacrifice is getting ready to go to bed at 9 p.m. on a Friday night. Sacrifice is spending your Christmas on the road with your teammates. Sacrifice is giving up everything in order to compete alongside your sisters and brothers. These are lessons that each of you know all about and have applied to your lives in regards to your sport since you were old enough to hold a basketball or kick a soccer ball. But the secret is that there is no secret. There is no shortcut. That is also how the real world works. As athletes, you know all about hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. So apply those lessons to everything that you are setting yourselves up to do next. Work hard at your career. Dedicate yourselves to a level of excellence and be willing to sacrifice everything in order to win in life. Which brings me to the final person in my community that helped me achieve my wildest childhood dreams. Someone who knows all about hard work. Someone who taught me everything with a simple phrase. This man is my biggest hero and my biggest supporter, my father. When I was a kid growing up, my dad was the one who drove me to every practice. And even then, when I was too young to understand, he used to always tell me, son, the store is open, and then drop me off for practice. Make sure that you get up every day, rain or shine, and work hard. Some days it is going to feel like you are on top of the world, and other days you are going to question every decision that you make. But no matter what, make sure that you are open for business. Go in, flip on the lights, 
And over time, know that this will allow you to grow a little bit every day. If you want to achieve your wildest childhood dreams, listen to my dad and make sure that your store is always open. To the UCSB class of 2019, during your time here, you were asked by the athletic department what being a gaucho is to each of you. To me, being a gaucho is remembering that I am not alone. That no matter what, I should remember how lucky I am because of this incredible community that is around me, but is now around all of you. It is something that we all now have in common. So as each of you run off into the world to go out and achieve your own wildest childhood dreams, don't forget the people that have gotten you to this amazing accomplishment in your lives. Each one of them has taught you a valuable lesson. Don't forget them, and none of us got here alone. Remember to embrace your worst days. Chip away daily at your goals. Accept criticism. Share and work hard. And if you do all of th these things, you will be well on your way to achieving your wildest childhood dreams. But in doing so, in doing so, you will also make the world a better place. Blazing your own trail gives hope and inspiration to those that are less fortunate. Create hope. Empty your cup. Be brave and be bold. You are the captain of your own destiny. Do not whisper. Speak loudly. Understand that the best part is when you achieve your wildest childhood dreams, you make it easier for the next person to do the same. You end up also helping someone else change the world. Class of 2019, jump, not knowing where you will land in the ocean, but that you will change the current. So I congratulate you all once again, and know that you will continue to make this university proud. But I remind you to continue to dream big and dream without fear. Do it for your own personal community of friends and family that you have, but most importantly, do it for the little kid in each and every one of you. Thank you.